when we found the Riverside Vineyard, that's where I wanted to stay. I saw no necessity or possibility of moving on. Um, there was a church planting taster day. This was early 2000. And Rick asked us if we'd go on it. So we, we did that. So I went in feeling fine. And I came out, as did Toby, um, knowing that God was, was calling us to plant. We got the call to church plant before we joined the staff at Riverside. And it was one of the sort of generous features of Rick and Lulu's leadership. They constantly invited people on staff who they knew were going to leave. It was, we led, we led the Kingdom Vineyard for about 14 years, during which time it had grown very fast at the start and then really not. Um, and I had a, a hernia operation that was botched and I got an abdominal infection and that was what um, an old police surgeon I used to know called a death familiarization course. <laughs> and uh, I treated it at least as a retirement familiarization course because I literally couldn't do anything for weeks on end. And I quite enjoyed it. Uh, a number of years before we planted, or indeed joined the staff at Riverside, we, we went to um, Chartwell, which is Winston Churchill's house, and on the wall there, there were various communications, including a, um, a pair of telegrams. And one was from Winston Churchill. It just said something to the effect of, first and only priority, destroy Rommel. And then the reply, a couple of months later from Monty of El Alamein uh, said, Rommel destroyed, await orders. And uh, I actually wept. And the custodian said to me, uh, don't worry, it takes a lot of people that way, <laughs> that exchange of. And there was something, something about it that just said, uh, duty done, what's next? And that came back to me really strongly when we'd actually handed over the church. I think the re relational transition is essential and I, it's one of the things that I love about the vineyard and that that opportunity is, is given um, by being in relationship in a church and so we had known Jim um, as an undergraduate very well. We knew him, we knew he loved the church, we knew he loved the values, he loved the vineyard, um, all of those things, and he wanted the job. Um, so that helped. He was also very aware that it wasn't gonna happen instantly, and we were too small a church to have him on staff, so he went away and came back, which I also think is invaluable. Yes, the actual process of handing over, I think uh, it is a bereavement. And uh, my youngest daughter, who gets all prophetic sometimes, um, said, Dad, you know what's happened to you? It's just like what happened to the apricot tree in the garden, uh, which the top had blown off in, in a heavy storm. Uh, one autumn, and I remember walking around it with, with her and trying to make the, cut the trunk in exactly the right place uh, and then prune back everything else so it looked like a tree. And the following year, it was simply covered in blossom, absolutely beautiful. And she said, that's what's happened to you. The top half of your life has been blown off. And I did, I did feel like that, actually, for a while. But I also felt, I know I've done the right thing, and actually, I. I look at the sort of before and after, sort of two tired old jaded pastors and uh, uh, long in the tooth and old and done, and then the, the youth and enthusiasm of, of Jim and Rachel and just their sheer ability and verve and the Holy Spirit all over them. And you know, you know you've done the right thing, but it is, it is a bereavement and there's no question about that. It just felt so right. The starting it felt right back in 2004 and the stopping in 2018 felt absolutely right. 
uh, we knew we'd planted well, but it, it, well, we weren't done until we'd passed the church on successfully. And at that point I felt the Lord sort of remind me of that. And I wept over again, really, to say, Church in St. Andrews planted a way to orders. Mm -hmm.